everyone. Welcome to the February Ask Tom Database Security Office Hours. I'm your host. My name is Richard Evans, and I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Hakeem Lumi here. Hakeem is one of our product managers. He covers data masking and subsetting, and he also does our global field enablement in Europe, too. So it's always great to have Hakeem on the call and to co-present here with him. Um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're glad you're here. We do this meeting every month, and it is an opportunity for us in Oracle Database Security product development to interact with you, the customers, the field uh, partners. And so each session will have uh, you know, a brief announcements, uh, some technical content, and then Q&A at the end of the session. Now, you can ask any question you want. You could probably stump me pretty quickly, um, but we'll do our best to answer any question you have. We can also take that offline too. So if you want to contact us, we'll provide our contact information. If you haven't registered, you can use that QR code on the screen to register for this second Wednesday of each month at 10 a.m. U.S. Central. Get to some announcements here. Um, I try to put everything we talk about that are links or things that are relevant on this GitHub repository. So I've got a QR code here that you can use to get to it. GitHub.com forward slash ask uh, or a DB sec ask Tom database security. And I'll also include that in the webinar chat here. So that way you don't have to try to write down the link really quick. Um, the QR codes hopefully make it a little easier for you to get to these pages. We've been doing this for almost a year. And so you can look at this and then go back and watch previous videos, or at least look at these links and get some idea of what we talked about. And then maybe links to labs or documentation or blog posts. Okay. Product updates. We talk about patching every month. Patching is uh, everyone's favorite thing, right? It's, it's a blast. We love doing it. It's important that we stay on top of it because once we release a patch or any vendor releases a patch, that's when we see a spike or an uptick in attempts to take advantage of, you know, maybe those uh, vulnerabilities or security holes or misconfigurations. So always stay current on your patching as much as possible. I've got a couple of my Oracle support notes here for you to look at. They're really easy, 888.1 and 555.1 for proactive patching and recommended patching, oracle.com forward slash security dash alerts for security related bulletins, critical patch updates, security alerts. And then if you're a rack customer, a real application customer, take advantage of Oracle fleet patching and provisioning. Go look at that to help you create these gold images for your grid infrastructure, your database, hopefully to make your patching much simpler than it may have been in previous years. And then finally, Mike Dietrich is the subject matter expert on all things patching and upgrades. So please take a look at Mike Dietrich's blog. And he's got a lot of good information on there. I go to Mike Dietrich's blog or I reach out to Mike and say, hey, Mike, can you help me understand this? So he's got information on our new monthly recommended patches, MRPs that are replacing RURs, the recommended update something. I forget what all the acronyms are, right? So take a look at Mike Dietrich's blog and he'll help you with that. Okay. Uh, Data Safe is now available in the U.S. government cloud. So if you're using the U.S. government cloud as a U.S. government, Department of Defense, or the Intel community, you can take advantage of Oracle Data Safe and go to the U.S. Gov West, U.S. Gov East in those environments. And let us know what you think. If you have any questions on this, if you want to see a demonstration, we're happy to look at this. We want to partner with our government customers on helping secure their Oracle Cloud investment. So available there. Uh, this is the year that you migrate from traditional to unified auditing. I mentioned this in January's Ask Tom Database Security Office Hours, and I'm going to continue to mention it throughout the year here. We want you guys to move from the traditional to the unified not just because it's been deprecated and will be de-supported in a future release, but because it's got so much more potential and you know options for you, whether it's sys context or component auditing or just getting that top level auditing or exceptions to the auditing. We want to make sure that you've got the tools in your toolkit to audit the sessions and the connections and, and collect the data that you need to. There's also a 
my Oracle support note out there to help you get started kind of converting from traditional to unified audit syntax. Now it's not, it's not going to give you the fine grained things or take advantage of a lot of the capabilities of unified audit because we don't know what you want to audit or how you want to audit within your environment, but it'll give you a starting point if you're not familiar with unified auditing. So check out that My Oracle support note on your screen there. Um, I will also include that in the GitHub repository links to you. I think I forgot that one. We've got some exciting live labs to talk about this month. We've got a new live lab out there on redacting. REST GET CALLS. So this lab walks you through, hey, you can REST enable a table, and then we want to redact that information that's shown from that REST call. So really kind of useful stuff, something you can do in your, your always free schema. You just spin up an autonomous database, load the data, enable the REST service, and then you know use another web browser to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. But it shows you the power of Autonomous database, Oracle data redaction, as well as Oracle uh, REST data services orgs. Another lab is our identity and access management with Oracle Autonomous Database. So you can simplify how your users authenticate to your autonomous databases. And we can do that by utilizing OCI IAM. So users in OCI IAM roles, groups in OCI, IAM, and then having a database password available to each of those or getting an authentication token to connect. So real easy live lab, again, something you can do in a free tenancy of Oracle Cloud. And probably the best for last here is the thing that Hakeem has been working on for months. <laughs> Hakeem has updated our database security live labs. So our full platform of Audit Vault, Database Firewall, Data Masking, which he'll cover today, everything, Database Vault. He, we've got this Database Security Live Labs out there. I think it was version 4.5, and now we're up to version 5 now with this release. And there's a QR code that Hakeem has put on the screen there. So easy to deploy in your tenancy. You can also do what we call like the green button, so you could run it on the Live Lab sandbox. So if you want to get your hands on Oracle database security products from Key Vault to TDE to data masking to Audit Vault, database firewall to database vault, everything, you can utilize this database security live lab. Now that live lab comes with some neat things here that include ABDF 20.8, Oracle Key Vault 21.5, which we've done previous Ask Tom database security office hours on where we've talked about the features and benefits of those updated Enterprise Manager, updated Oracle SQL Developer, updated Database Enterprise Edition, you know, and then a lot of just minor enhancements that we've added there based on your feedback. So really good things there, Hakeem. I really appreciate you spending a lot of time on that. Did I miss anything here, man? Did I uh, it's all right. take credit off? So um, really good stuff, really, really good stuff. So finally, Database 23C, kind of codenamed App Simple for the developer innovations that we've added to there. There's a lot of security things in there as well. If you want to be a part of the Oracle 23C beta, beta one's currently going on. Beta two should start here in the next eh, month or two. But feel free to grab that QR code or go to tinyurl.com forward slash Oracle beta. Sign up get a look at what is coming in the next long-term release of the Oracle database. Cool. Hakeem, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, it's my tour. <laughs> um, but first of all, I'm really happy, really, really happy that the Live Labs are online today. And uh, we, had, we had a few mistakes this morning, but now it's all right, it works. So please, please deploy, deploy it and uh, give me your feedback. It's really important to me. All right, so let's have a look on the DMS. So as you know, we have two different features, data masking and subsetting. Here, we will talk about only masking, all right? But I, I would like to show you the, the advanced features. So I will uh, demonstrate uh, how to use these advanced features. And also, I would like to talk about the different ways to uh, deploy a, a DMS in different architectures. Okay, so let's 
let's have a look on the, the different features. So for data masking, this is a concept quite easy to understand. Uh, you have an original data and you want to apply a masking format on this original data just to mask, to anonymize this data forever. So it means with no way, uh, no way back process to retrieve the original data. And we combine in our solution, we combine data masking with a subsetting feature. And this subsetting feature can uh, provide you uh, provide you the ability to reduce drastically the, the amount of volume of your sensitive data. So that's why when we combine masking and subsetting, we have a very powerful and very strong um, uh, tool in our hands. So today we will talk about more about masking. So ma uh, data masking and subsetting is a is a, a plugin is is part of OEM Enterprise Manager. So first of all, you have to install your you install your own OEM on your side or on your data center or whatever wherever you want, and you will use the latest version of DMS with the plugin of OEM. So that's why it's really important to patch or to update or upgrade your OEM Enterprise Manager console if you want to use the latest version of DMS. This is really important because sometimes a few people make this makes this kind of confusion. So DMS, it's not an, uh, an independent tool. It's completely a part of OEM, and you need to uh, to patch and update OEM to use the latest version of DMS. Okay, let's have a look on the different ways to um, to deploy uh, DMS. So you have two main okay two main ways. The first one is called in database. So it means the transformation. The, the masking script and the subsetting script will be applied, all right, within the database. So to avoid to mask the original data, so the production data, for example, we need we need an intermediate database. We call it we call it a staging database. So what we have to do? We have to upload from the source. In general, this is a production database. We upload, <coughs> sorry, the data into the staging database. We process, we execute the, the masking script and subsetting script within the database, the staging database. And at the end, the result can easily uh, be published to different targets. It can be, of course, the same engine like Oracle to Oracle. But with this option, we can address the heterogeneous um, uh, environment. So it can be different. Uh, you can have any sources to any targets. We will see that in details, what kind of uh, other tool we have to combine in an heterogeneous environment. OK, so here this is the in database. And you have the second way. This second way is called in export. We will use here the data pump utility so we will generate an export data data pump file all right and at the end of course this file will be masked subset and of course we can encrypt it so this is a, a, a point really interesting because with data pump you can apply a, an encryption algorithm so like that your dump file will be encrypted and can be provided to different services different department departments sorry all around the globe if you want <laughs> but all around your company and again here we will apply the masking and subsetting script during the process but as you can see here we haven't got any um, intermediate database we don't need that because we will apply the script the scripts during the export process. So here 
the 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 sensitive or the data will, will be exported and during this process we will apply this the masking script we will generate here at the end a dump file already masked so ready to be used ready to use for different targets but here you understood the target must be an oracle target because we will use <clears throat> the data pump import utility of course to import the dump file okay so you have two different ways with two different interesting uh, um, concept and moment when you when you uh, will execute it all right go deeply uh, in these two different ways so you can apply this different approach of course on premises but also you can um, interact with the cloud so here for example in database we'll be able to um, to transform your on-premises database into your cloud target so here we call it in db to cloud all right in database to cloud so it, it means your staging is still on premises on premise sorry and you will apply the script on premise but the result will be published to the target into the cloud all right for the export it's quite similar you understood we will generate locally okay on premise the uh, export file and this export file will be imported into the cloud okay you have another way to do so to do that we call uh, we call it clone to cloud so during a cloning process from on premises to cloud we can apply the masking script so it's very interesting and powerful because here you will uh, you will uh, win a lot of time because again during the process for your pluggable during the, the 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 moving process the cloning process you will apply the masking script you have also the the possibility to use a non-premise enterprise manager to manage okay an uh, uh, an architecture into the cloud so it can be of course a source and a target in the cloud and you will be able to apply your script from your on-premise enterprise manager console Okay, this is another way to uh, to use it. You have also the possibility to use data guard. So data guard, as maybe you are not familiar with that, um, it's um, to understand it. This is a standby database. So you have your production, for example, and if you want uh, uh, to be sure your uh, your environment will be uh, will be able to. Uh, to continue uh, to work after an outage, for example, okay, this is a, a, a very good way to restart your job, okay? So physical standby here means all the different um, modification and changes from your primary will be applied into your standby database. So this standby database will be okay will be uh, uh, will create sorry will create another standby database and we call it a snapshot standby so what we will do during this this step we will convert this physical standby okay to a snapshot standby so it means at this time you have a duplication of the existing physical standby okay now we can define and we can um, create mask format subsetting format okay and we can generate easily an export from this this stand, uh, snapshot standby database to create or to generate the export dump file okay and again at the end we will be able to easily import this dump file to a different target so this is another way an, another way to create a, a test a, a, a test database for example a dev environment and uh, if you don't want to 
maybe you haven't got in, uh, any main maintenance window or you haven't got enough time or you don't want to um, to manipulate or to use the resources from the your product database here this is a good way to implement a data masking process into this kind of architecture without any um, perturbation okay of your production and of course at the end you will convert your snapshot standby to a physical standby just to restart here the process of the replication okay just to refresh and to pick up the 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 new uh the new data here okay so don't forget uh keep in mind sorry data guard can be very interesting and very powerful combined combined to um uh, with with a dms in another way you can use also uh, an interesting features uh, called snap clone okay so you have a production and here you still have a standby a standby database but now we will create a test master so test master is a snap clone of a database okay and the in this test master you will retrieve um, um ex quite exactly the same value the same data from your standby but each time you will modify an environment you can create a functional copy like that you will be able to duplicate this test master in different environment and each environment will be absolutely isolate so in that case you can for example create on this on this copy functional copy you can create new tables you can apply different uh, different uh, algorithm you can test every uh, every uh, what you want you can again delete drop truncate tables and differently uh, com comparing to the um, to the other functional copies but the original value are still in the test master like that you have an original uh, it's like an incarnation uh, incarnation zero here okay and you can create different incarnation with different life okay lives sorry for each of them but you will never impact the test master so again this this uh, this way to deploy the masking and to use the masking can be also very very powerful and interesting especially if you have a, a huge a, a huge uh, amount of volume um, uh, in your database so here because you will reduce the, the 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 space you need because in these functional copies you will just you will just uh, store the the few uh, bytes that you modify change add uh, and uh, create okay you have also another way to use dms especially for the incremental uh, environment uh, let let me let me explain in details what is it an incremental environment means sometimes um, i have uh, an original loading with a huge amount of of volume of data okay but each time i don't want i don't want to um, apply my mask script my masking script sorry into this huge amount i just want to do that initially and i and i accept the 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 time very very long for example to mask everything and to refresh everything but from this moment now i just want to apply the the incremental event events or the incremental data oracle golden gates is very very uh, useful for that because it's based on on the scn so it will take the number of course uh, of the last value um, imported into your target and it will compare of course this last value to the new values and like that it will just apply the difference between the last and the new values so 
it's interesting again because you will apply your masking script just um, uh, in, into the new values and not uh, on on the on everything on your database. So again, here it's interesting, especially if you want to use data masking in a continuous way, or if you want uh, to uh, to use it in a very huge environment. I mean, a very very large database. Okay, so in that case you can define the mask and subset, uh, subset script into your target, and you can stop the replication, apply, of course, these different scripts, generate or not, or duplicate, okay, the, the, the data uh, with the import data pump import, for example, into your task dev or target database. And at the end, of course, you restart the replication just again, to refresh the environment and to pick up the, the new data, okay? You have also uh, another way uh, to, uh, to use DMS in an heterogeneous environment. So for example, you have a MySQL here, or a SQL server, or it can be also a CSV file, an XML, a JSON file, whatever, a bus or uh, what you want. If you combine with the staging database and ODI, Oracle Data Integrator. Here you have a, a very strong, a very strong configuration to address all the different heterogeneous engines. Engines. So, for example, you can mask any sources to any target, and again, it could be completely different. But of course, you will use an Oracle database between that. All right because again, we have to apply the masking script and the subsetting sub script in database, all right? And ODI will be able to address all the, 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 the sources and all the targets. So again, think about that because ODI is also a cloud service. So you can combine, for example, ODI CS with DMS, okay? to address different uh, uh, different use cases, all right, for your, your environment. Okay, so now let's go deeper on how we will use um, the, the, the advanced uh, features of DMS. So first of all, you have to understand and you have to be familiar and very comfortable with the workflow. So initially, what we are doing with DMS, we, we took, uh, we take, sorry, we take production data, we apply an algorithm. So it can be a masking algorithm, a subsetting algorithm to generate a new data set masked and subsetted. And here at the end, the result will be load, uh, loaded, sorry, into a test database, okay, a test environment. So like that, you will have two different environments. The first one, your original data, and at the end, the final data, the new data, okay? With, again, no way to retrieve the original data. Here, this is a real masking process. So forget the uh, mapping table, the tokenization, uh, or, or even the, the hash function, because with this, uh, with this concept, we can retrieve the original data. And it's really dangerous, especially if you want to anonymize forever uh, a data, okay? So to do that with DMS, you have to create an ADM, so an application data model. What it will do, it will collect the metadata from your production environment, so your source environment, okay? it will generate that into Enterprise Manager. So that's why you need Enterprise Manager because this, um, uh, this framework give you, uh, gives you sorry, um, uh, a repository. And into this repository, it can store a lot of things. Of course, especially the, the metadata of your production environment. It's interesting because, because you store this uh, this kind of information, you can also enrich them. So you can create new re relationship, you can create new constraints, 
you know, you can add more and more uh, functional um, uh, functional rules, for example, uh, that are not available or not created in your production environment. So that's why here, after that, it's really, uh, really easy to retrieve a, a difference, a gap between the last version and the new version. And uh, we can create easily uh, a script based on different sensitive colon. And of course, you can add new sensitive colon, or you can, of course, delete the, the different. You can duplicate also this ADM, and you can create different masking, depending or accordingly, maybe the time of your week, uh, the, the frequency of your refresh, uh, the complexity of, the, of your uh, schemas, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's why it's it's interesting, and of course, it's mandatory to create this ADM. Once your ADM is created, now now you have two options. You can uh, create independently a data masking definition or a data subsetting definition, and you can execute these script generated. For uh, only uh, to, to only subset or to only mask a data, but you can also combine these two different scripts. But you have to respect the sequence. You have to create the masking format before the subsetting format, because at the end we will execute a masking and a subsetting script at different moment of your process. In, uh, in in fact, we will uh, subset the your data first, and after that, the result will be mask. So that's why you have to create. It's quite um, hard to understand, but that's why you have to create your masking script at first, even if it's if it will be executed at in in second in a second step. Okay. So here you you understood now the process, and we will focusing uh, we will focus sorry on the masking script. Here this is a matrix of all the different algorithm algorithms sorry available in data masking. And as you can see, you have different colons with combinable, reversible, or deterministic. So. Combinable means you can combine all these different, uh, different algorithms each other. But here, of course, if it's not the case, you cannot combine them. So for example, here, SQL expression must be executed alone. You cannot combine SQL expression with different other alg algorithm. Here you have reversible. So the only rows with this uh, capability is the encrypting, the encrypt algorithm. It's reversible, so take care. Here, it's not a real masking script because, as I said earlier, a masking script uh, gives you the, the, the capacity to mask definitely, okay, forever an original data. But here, you can retrieve the original value. So it's it's useful, especially um, for different environments. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, just to test different things, and you want to access, you want to retrieve the original data. The data and deterministic here are very um, are dedicated to uh, complex environment with, for example, replication between different databases, and if you want. Uh, to be sure, each time you will apply this masking script, you will retrieve exactly the same new value. So it's based on hash, uh, on a hash algorithm. And of course, you need to put the same hash value each time you will apply the script. But, but don't worry, because even with deterministic, you cannot retrieve the original value. So this is a real masking script all right so i would like to to sh to uh, to show you a quick demo 
So let's switch here. Where is it here? Let's switch to, uh, I created a video, so I can, of course, share this, this video for you just to, uh, uh, to, to avoid to, uh, to, to, to waste uh, the, the time. Okay. So let's do it. So what we are, we, what we will do in this video, we will create a, a script, a masking script. So I already created a, an ADM. So my ADM is called ADM advanced. All right. I will edit it just to show you what there is uh, inside. So to access on it, of course, I need a, a, a privileged user. I call it DMS admin. So here, this is all the the objects that I um, that I have in my uh, application data model. Here, this is a sensitive columns that I uh, tag as sensitive. Of course, it's not all the columns because I just want to focus my work on the few a uh, few amounts of columns just to create a, a dedicated and specific uh, script. I create, uh, I already created a masking script called employee dat data mask. So I edited just to show you the different columns. I'm working on the CDB1, PDB1. I called my script, uh, my, uh, my masking, my definition script uh, as a description, as you can see. And here you have the column group. So the first advanced option interesting is called the compounding. The compounding is based on the group. So you can select different, uh, different columns and create a group. And here in my example, I will, uh, I will take uh, data, new data from a, a table called mask data. Okay. So from this object, now I can select for each colon of my group, which masking colon I will use. So as you can see, I can use different colons. Like that, I will be able to, to have something consistent. And uh, when I will uh, change, for example, the address, I will take all the same value of this row into my mask data table. And like that, I will be sure I have a real or a, a, a fake, a real fake, okay, data from my my mask, my my, my data mask uh, data table. And like that, I will be sure my address will have uh, uh, the the city that I want, the country that I want, the code, the, the postal code, and, and and so on and so on. I can create again a coherent, a, a consistent group. Okay, now let's have a look on, on another algorithm. So I will work on the fun facts table, uh, colon, sorry. So by default, I will apply, if it's null, uh, I will apply a format xxx-xxx. And if it's not by default, I will apply here an encrypt, an encrypt format, uh, an encrypt algorithm. So uh, uh, remember here, this is a reversible, uh, only for encrypt, this is a reversible algorithm. It's based on a regular expression. So the regular expression is here, you see? So you can put all the regular exp expressions that, that you know. And again, if you uh, check here the result, you can see the different uh, result um, uh, according the, the the condition. Now, Let's have a look and, and I will apply another algorithm on phone, phone mobile column. So here I will apply a SQL expression. So the SQL expression can be very, very complex. In my case, I will apply a decode and I will apply a decode with different results. If, for example, the value is null, I will apply n not available information. So n slash a. Okay, if it's not null, I will apply now a complex algorithm just to mask the data uh, in in a, in a in a different way. Way so here I will apply here as you can see a Nora hash uh, function, and of course I will concat with different other other Nora hash function just to have the final result result that I want. So here. 
I will have a phone mobile uh, number. And it, again, if I tick, uh, select another one, I can see not available and so on. It will check that everything will work correctly. Now let's have a look on the uh, salary. We will apply a different a different alg algorithm based on the condition. So we have we call it conditioning masking. So here, as you can see, I have different conditions with different value. So for each condition, I will apply a different algorithm. So in my example, if the position, so here I'm based, you see, I will modify the colon salary, but I can base, of course, my condition, my wear clothes, okay, on another, on another colon. That the, that, that's the case here. I will just uh, analyze the value of the column position. If the, posi the position is DBA, I will apply an array, uh, array list. And here, of course, I uh, define my list of values. And uh, randomly, the, uh, the, the script will take one of these values randomly each for each row. So I will here i will test it so here i have 200 for the next condition if my position is regional manager now i will apply the shuffle algorithm the shuffle means i will take in the same column because here you see i didn't put any other columns so it will take in the same salary column it will take randomly another value and it will apply that for this new value. So again, I can test it and I have a, a value from this column. If my position is district manager, I will apply a random number between 1,500 uh, 1, uh, uh, and 2,500. And again, if I check it, I have an example of the result. Finally, if my position is administrator, I want I want a new value. So I don't need to put anything because my new value will be a new value. It's quite easy to understand. And by default, if I have no position uh, in these conditions, I will apply a fixed number. And this fixed number, number will be 1000, okay? So here, this is an example on how to use different condition with different algorithm. And finally, we will uh, apply another, another uh, algorithm to the first name column, and we will use the substitute. So this is a deterministic uh, algorithm, and this substitute will be based on the new table, so mask data, and the column name surname, okay? So again, it will use a new value from this column from this table okay and of course once my um, my uh, uh, definition is correct i will generate now my script so to generate it you select your masking definition and you click uh, generate here i have my two different options as you can see in database or in export in this example i will use in database so I select, I select it, and of course, again, I have to select my uh, privilege um, uh, user, DMS admin. I create, I generate my my script, and you can of course follow the process to see if the generation is uh, finished or not. Here, this is finished, and you can see different information, interesting, as like like the uh, the volume the. Sp space that you need, for example. Okay, so now let's go back to the definition. And here you see the script is generated. Now, before executing it, I would like to be sure uh, I will compare my uh, before and after uh, value. So now I go to SQL Developer. And for the production, I will execute exactly the same, the same query in production and in dev. So in production, I will just query to prod. And I will, of course, 
query my demo HR employees. So before masking and here, as you can see, for example, for the user ID uh, 14, I have this value. I will compare to my dev just to be sure my value uh, values are exactly the same. So I'm in the dev and now I will target my dev schema. So and the same table. And as you can see, I have exactly the same value. So now I can I can uh, apply my masking script uh, into these values. All right. So I show you the different and everything is the same. I will click schedule. And now again, because because I created my uh, I generated my uh, my script as a NIN database, I have I must I must select mask in database option here during my uh, execution. And of course, because if you modify this value, it will be modified forever again with no way to retrieve the orig original value. So that's why we are asking explicitly to select this, this option. The selected target is not a production database. Like that, explicitly, explicitly you did it. You accept, you did accept to apply this, this script. So you have to, you must to select it. And because we are using substitute and encrypt format, we have to put a seed. So a seed, this is uh, for the hash uh, function, okay, the aura, aura hash function. And it can be, of course, any text string. In my example, I, I'm using Oracle 123. It means every time, each time you will use Oracle 123 as a seed, you will have exactly the same result the same if i if i put a different seed oracle one two three four i will have a different result so this is a, a good way to have a deterministic result it means i can apply this script for example on monday or on wednesday or on friday and because i'm using the same seed i will have exactly the same result all right, so that's why you have to uh, you must you must uh, put a, a seed here. After that, of course, I will modify the location to uh, create my script. The script the scripts will be stored in this location, so locally on your server on your database server. So you need to to have access on this server, and you need to have access as a as a linux if this is a linux uh, with a, a credential uh, uh, to log in to this server so that's why here i'm using os oracle ssh as you can see i will uh, log on uh, as opc user i am using my ssh private key okay and i will uh, uh, and i need of course a privilege sudo and i will run as a, an oracle user i test everything if of course the, the test is successful, of course, you can, you will be able to execute the script. Now I will uh, execute the script with a Oracle, a database, a database user. Here, my privileged database user is DMS admin. So again, I have to select it. And now I can submit my, my job and I will apply now my masking script. Okay, so I will follow the execution. So it can be long. It depends, of course, of the, the number of rows that you have to mask. At the end, the masking script should be mm, succeeded. And now I will go back to my SQL developer to see the effect, the result of the impact of my masking script. Of course, in the production, of course, the data, data are the same. But now let's have a look on the dev environment. And in the dev environment, now I did apply all the different masking formats uh, to my to my value. So if I compare my first name, so remember it was a, a substitute. So I took the uh, from the mask data table the value uh, 
from the surname surname colon. Okay. Now, if I compare now the day uh, the the address, so the address are consistent. So it means this is a group address one two po postal code city state and country uh, should be should be mask in the same way with the same value from again the mask data table so if you see in the mask data table the line um, this line now uh, this line with this address you should have the same code postal uh, postal code the same city the same state and the same country and so on and so on all right so here we have a consistent address because this is a group okay and of course it's different compared to the production now let's have a look on the let's have a look on the phone mobile if you remember we had uh we had a sorry we had a, a condition so if it was new I, I did apply not available. So remember, it was a decode and it was not null. I, I did apply a aura hash function. So here again, I did it. And if I compare to my production, it's different. And uh, for the fun facts, I apply, I did apply an encrypt based on the regular expression. So it's different. And for the salary, if you remember also, we had different conditions and uh, regarding regarding the position and if it was a regional manager district manager db and so on we had another uh, a different result so here if we combine if we compare to the prod we have exactly what we want what we would would like okay we have five minutes uh, isn't it uh richard yes sir Okay, perfect. So let's let's move forward. So you have here now just uh, in the front of you what we did. So I will go, I, I will do it faster because of course we will provide us we will provide you the 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 the, the slides. If you want to to go deeply, uh, you have to know that with data masking and subsetting, you have the post the you have the pre and the post scripting options what does it mean uh, before executing your masking script you can you can add um, a deeper, uh, uh, another another pl sql um, uh, function uh, or queries or what you want before executing the script and the same in the same way you can also execute a pl sql or uh, a query after executing script so we call it pre and post scripting option so in this example i will show you how to use a temporary table space so in my case i will create my table space before executing the script so in the pre mask script section i will add this this query okay this syntax create table space blah 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 I will, of course, after that, execute my script based on this new table space. And at the end of the execution, I will drop the table space. So again, in the post mask script section, I will add these, this query. So here, this is a really powerful um, uh, mechanism to uh, create, for example, work a workspace uh, uh, a workspace or work table or temporary table or if you want to combine different uh, different things uh, loaded or uh, loaded or if you want to upload it upload sorry uh, different data from different database so you can see you can combine a really complex environment uh, thanks to these uh, these uh, options all right so now uh I think I, I think yeah. I finished. I think I finished. Uh, Akeem, we've got some questions. Can we get yes, some of questions in the in the Q and A there? You want to take okay. take those? Of course, of course. Okay. So the first one is: Are the storage requirements for the staging database the same as the size of the source and target? No, no, because as you have seen with the uh, with the with the, the console or enterprise manager console, you will create an application data model. 
Okay, and in, in this application data model, you will select only the different tables or the different objects in general that you would like to modify, that you would like to transform. So like that, you can select few tables. And even in these tables, you can select the just a, a, a few parts of your uh, of your table. So uh, and like that. Uh, you don't need to to have exactly the same value of the sources or the target. All right, the second one, uh, second one is ODI license included with DMS? No, 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 no. ODI and DMS are two different uh, solutions. So DMS DMS is a package of Enterprise Manager, okay, and ODI is a solution independent. So you have to. Of course, you have to uh, to to purchase a license for ODI, and again, ODI can be also an ODI CS, a cloud service. Okay, so you just need to subscribe to this cloud service. Okay, final question: When using a table to get random name, first name, last name, would this table need to be present under each database or schema that needs data mask? Yes, yes, the, the answer is yes, because um, your script will be generated, for example, on the production or on the duplicate uh, database, for example. But this script will work because it will use the existing uh, schema, the existing uh, structure of your tables. If this table, if this structure doesn't exist, the script will, will never work. So that's why it needs, of course, the structure at minimum. Now, if the content is different, you uh, it's not it's not really a problem. But you need you absolutely need the same structure. So that's why when you apply um, a, a script, you have an option just to associate your uh, your script to another database. Like that, it will compare if everything is present or not. If there is a mistake, it will it will tell you it will tell you and it will say, okay, I cannot associate this script to this database because it missed uh, this object, this object, and so on. All right. We have one more uh, that came in here. Okay, one more. Is it possible to apply two data masking method in a colon? For example, shuffle method first, and after adding. Uh, DMS random to car and so on. Okay, if again, if this is combinable, you can combine two, three, uh, ten different uh, algorithm. If it's not uh, possible to combine them, you cannot do it. So that's why I, I provided you the the matrix with all the algorithm. It's really important. Otherwise, you will have a, an error message. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, next month is going to be on Wednesday, 8 March. So just like uh, the 8th of February, it's the 8th of March. And I think we're going to talk about Audible and Database Firewall 20.9 coming out. So again, thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next month. And thanks, Akeem, for this fantastic presentation.